Hello and welcome to the Rangers Journal. My name is Billy Rankin. This evening we've got a little bit of a special pod, uh, extra pod for you. We're going to be looking at Rangers player Fabio Silva on loan from Wolves, but we're going to talk to Gully from a podcast down in Wolverhampton to get his views on how the, the loan's going and how what he thinks of him as a player. So we hope you enjoy the show. Firstly, let me invite or introduce in the show, Gully. How are you doing, mate? All right, thanks, Billy. How are you? I'm okay. Thank you very much for coming on. Uh, you, you feel free, sorry, just now to to tell us a little bit about yourself and a bit about the podcast that you do. Yeah, so I'm part of the um, the Wolves Fancast, um, which is uh, one of the most prominent uh, Wolves fan channels. Um, got YouTube, got um, podcast, um, all the usual stuff um, on social media as well. Um, I kind of look after the kind of tactical side of stuff do a lot of analysis data and things like that um so yeah that's that's me really and this is my uh, twitter handle um which i use at molly musings thank you very much for that um my own connection to wolverhampton as i was saying to you before as i've been through a few times but um back in the day you used to get shoot magazine and in the back of it it would show you all the all the divisions and back then I seen this team in the fourth division, the English fourth division, called Wolves. <laughs> I thought that's like a cool name. And then I seen they had a guy called Steve Bull, who seemed to score more than Ali McCoist. And for me, that was a big thing. And then watching them year on year climbing up the table to being really where they where they are now and kind of well known at the top of the English division. How, how long have you been a follower all your life? I'm assuming. Yeah, literally. I mean, I was born the proverbial kind of stones throw away from the stadium. Um, I challenge anyone to to find a house closer that, that when I first <laughs> where I first lived. Um, genuinely, my dad worked on the turnstiles and stuff on match days. Um, right. So all I've ever known is kind of going to games. I don't even remember what my first game was, if I'm being brutally honest, and my dad doesn't either, which is uh, quite frustrating. Um, but yeah, season ticket holder for 20 odd years now seen it all um apart from the fourth division because i'm not quite old enough for that no no it's not as old as me um but that, <laughs> that's fine uh, I, well, thank you again for coming on we've asked you to come on to have a wee discussion about fabio silva um i guess from our perspective from a rangers point of view but also good to see what you thought of him uh, as a wills player um now you signed him he was a 18 year old not really done much in the in the game how did you feel first of all when when you signed him it was very much a time when the club was transfer policy wise almost being run by george mendes right and uh, he obviously had his fingers all over this deal um the reported fee at the time was 35 million pounds um for those that play football manager um fabio silva was a name that kind of was already um infamous i would say um scored a hell of a lot of goals for me on the game um and uh, i think everyone of that persuasion was quite excited assuming that we'd signed this wonder kid who was going to go on to to do incredible things for us um so it was a bit of an odd transfer in that sense um because i think it was mendes probably shaking a few hands and making sure he was looking after porto obviously who we signed him from um mm. at the time needed i think a bit of financial stability and that provided that for them um so it's kind of tainted his entire Wolves career that figure um because obviously he's not established himself as a Wolves player yet don't think he ever will now um but I think he's had a you could you could write a hell of a lot of column inches on his career today it's, it's one of the hottest talking points um within the Wolves fan base uh, I noticed in one of the reports that mentioned him being all through these age groups he was stand out as a as a number nine um throughout his kind of youth career um but it did it did strike to me as rather odd that he went for some, you know a club record fee i believe at the time i don't know if it still is your record fee it was yeah at the time um it is now i think it's mateus Cunha now who thankfully is showing that kind of form um yeah but yeah it was a like you say a very strange one um especially considering 
we had Raul Jimenez, obviously, at the time, who was, you know, just all conquering, you know, an unbelievable striker. So we, we, it was highly unlikely that a thirty-five million pound player was ever going to get into the team. Um, right. But he also was obviously eighteen years old. So why would you expect him to just walk into the team? Right? It wasn't ever a, a, a signing with that in mind. I don't think. Um, but he was there to be an understudy, learn the trade, and um, get minutes where possible. That didn't tra- that didn't happen. Um, obviously, inf- um, infamous now the the Raul Jimenez head injury, which kind of derailed us as a club to a certain extent, um, which really threw Fabio in at the deep end, and he ended up having to play a lot more before he was ready to. Um, I mean, when he first joined as an eighteen-year-old, uh, a strong gust of wind would have probably blown him over. He was just not physically in the right shape to, to lead the line for a Premier League team. Um, I, I realise you, you wouldn't be probably following our pod particularly closely, but I did mention a, a couple of weeks ago, he, he scored for us at Ibrox and the, he runs behind the goal and the camera pans on him. And the, his frame's actually really big now. He's put on a, a, a bit of muscle. Um, but back then, I see the pictures of him. He, yeah, you're right. He looked like he could have been blown over. It, that was my first question, actually. Were, were, you, were you happy about the price tag? I guess you're telling me you weren't happy about the price tag. I mean, as things have transpired, you know, that was the kind of deal that really put us in the in the mire financially. You know, we've been quite close this season to falling foul of the financial fair play rulings, um, potentially getting a, a, a points deduction. But we obviously sold a lot of players in the summer to alleviate that kind of thing. £35 million pounds to us is not the kind of money we can just throw, out, throw about. Um, so when you kind of trace back you know all the spending that we've done that that didn't go to plan everyone has to be able to point the finger at this at this guy and i, I just feel sorry for him because of that because I, I, I think his career has been dictated to him a little bit as opposed to him carving out his own path um, which is a real shame it's interesting you say 35 million being uh, a big thing for you we <laughs> we can't even dream of getting anywhere near uh, 35 million with the, the investment in the scottish league unfortunately have you seen any of his games at rangers so far or watched any of the highlights i like i said i've kind of traced his career i mean first first things first i i always thought he had ability and i've always thought he had talent um kind of guy who can sniff out opportunities out of not much um but he obviously never managed to establish himself at Wolves. He had a couple of loans. I even went to PSV last year to watch him out on loan. Um, my brother and I, it was quite easy to get tickets. So we thought, why not just pop out there for a little little, little trip out to Eindhoven. Um, he came off the bench there in a game um, what, that we were out watching. So I've always paid attention to any, anything he's done away from the club um, on loan. I've seen that he started quite well. One thing I have noticed is that he started on the left side of the, the front three, I think, recently. Um, he's a very good player, I think, when he's facing goal. With his back to goal, he's still got a lot of work to do in terms of developing his game. Um, and I think you saw that with the way he took his goal against Hibs the other, the other night, wasn't it? Um, and he had a good game by all accounts against Benfica, from what I understand. He did, yeah, um, he did. Yeah, and that was from the left-hand side. I think he's shown when he when he gets the ball in space and he's able to make things happen. Um, but I just think he's got a little bit of experience to gain in terms of fighting defenders and you know working his way out in a crowded penalty area and, and, and having to deal with two set arrives who are going to kick the shit out of him, frankly. Um, <laughs> you know, so yeah. But I, I've I'm pleased he's he's managed to get game time and, and get a run. We. Um... We did have a concern because we had a bit of a, still kind of do have a bit of a striker problem with Kamar Roof being permanently injured by the, by the sound of it, by it seems. Uh, Danilo that we signed in the summer was out with a, a long-term injury and we were really looking for a striker to be brought in because we only had Cyril Dessers. We were kind of told that he was an out-and-out striker, but even in his first interview with us, he, he seemed to say that he's not a kind of stereotypical striker. Would you say number nine? Is that where he played for you? Is that where you've seen him play on loan? Would you prefer him in his number nine role? Or I think ulti- I think ultimately he will be. Um, I I think it's difficult when you get young players coming through, especially forwards. The the ones that are really successful from an early age, I think, have to be quick. Um, 
or have it as some other kind of physical attributes that means they can kind of handle themselves in in the adult game. Um, he's ne- he's not the quickest, although he has developed that, and he's not the strongest. So he always looks a little bit like he can't handle that position. But I think by the time he's kind of 23, 24 years old, hopefully he'll have filled out physically, um, and he will look a bit better as a striker. I think I think of someone like Dominic Solanke, who's kind of blossomed a little bit later in his career, always had that big frame, not quite sure of how to use his body and things like that. I think Fabio's got that about him, where he will develop that slightly later on. Um, for now, I think it's probably the right thing to do, maybe back off this season um, to use him from a wider position because he can still score goals from there, right? He's still got that ability to to finish chances and, and, and run at players and, and make things happen. But you just don't want him fighting off centre-halves for most of the game. I think you, you lose him as a player if, you, if he's doing that at the moment. I was having a look through these two loan moves to Anderlecht and PSV. Um, did you get a chance to watch him? Was he was he played as an out and out striker there? Do you know? PSV tended to play slightly wider. They had Luke De Jong up front there, who's kind yeah. of just you know regular goal scorer. Anderlecht, he was the main man, um, but in a team that, I mean, based on their history, just were underperforming massively. He, he had his moments. If you look at the amount of minutes he's played in his career and the, his goal record, it stands up pretty well yeah. um, in terms of. If, as long as he's playing, he will produce. Um, but you know, at Wolves, before his loan moves, he was getting minutes off the bench and stuff. And I think what really killed him from a Wolves perspective was after the season where he played too much, he then played too little in the second season when Raul Jimenez came back from his head injury. So then he went out on loan. And, and to be fair to him, he, he's done all right. You know, he, he won a trophy at PSV last year as well. Yeah, Came back in, started in the team um, at the start of this season, had a chance. Just missed a few chances, I think. If, you know, I've, there are a lot of sliding doors moments with his career, which I think um, have dictated what's ended up happening with him, and he's ended up being a bit of a scapegoat again because of the fee, um, which is is unfair on him, I think. But yeah, had, had he been? Is it when he went out on loan? Was that a surprise to you? Had you been expecting him to go out on loan anyway? I think, given the way the second season went for him, where he just didn't play enough. If he wasn't, if that was going to be the case again, then it was it was absolutely the sensible thing to do. Um, we ended up having another injury crisis because we had uh, Sasha Kalajdzic come back in, getting an ACL on his um, on his debut. We had to sign Diego Costa. So, in hindsight, he probably would have played a lot more if he didn't go out on loan to Anderlecht. But um, for him and his development and his game and us retaining a sense of value in his transfer fee, if we were to sell him as well, I think the club have had to think along those lines now. Um, was the sorry? Do you know was it in this particular transfer window to when he came to Rangers? Do you know if there, if there was other interest from other clubs? I feel like every summer there's been a lot of interest. I think there were a few clubs from Turkey that were looking at him. Uh, a couple from Germany as well. There's always been interest in him whenever he's the, there's a likelihood of him being available. So I think teams clearly rate him, right? Um, I actually think, from what I remember, Celtic were in for him as well. Uh, right. uh, so it would have been interesting. We'll write a song about that for the stands. Yeah, yeah. Yep. Well, when he scores against them, you absolutely can. Yeah. yeah. Um, um, it just was more along the lines of what, what, if there was other teams in, uh, across Europe, at least he'd been over in, in Holland, obviously. Um, wh- why do you think he chose Rangers? What would have attracted them to come to us? I think it's two parts to that. I think this, the club would have decided to a certain extent where he's likely to have the most success. We have a very kind of strategic approach to loans, making sure we get the best fit for the players that we have going out on loan. Um, I think, obviously, you suggested that there was a space for him uh, to actually come in and straight away get minutes. Um, so if you're looking for a striker, it's it that, that stands you in good stead. Um, and... I think the style of football, as much as the the level of the football, is it counts for something. Um, people are suggesting suggesting he might need to go to the championship. Um, I don't know if that level would have allowed him to succeed as much as maybe Scotland does. I, I mean, to be without wanting to be disrespectful, I felt like the championship is probably overall at a higher standard um, than the SPL as as it, at the moment in time and. It would have been difficult for the club if he went there and failed 
So they wanted to make sure it was a bit more of a sure thing that he goes and gets goals somewhere. And I think it, it sounds like he's, he started promisingly at least. Do you think though, um, I mean, I don't know, you might not watch much much Scottish football, but there's not a lot of space in the final third for creative players. Uh, teams tend to park the bus. You you generally have all of the opposition teams, especially at home, in their own third. There's not a lot of space. Is, is he this type of player that's going to benefit, or be able, not benefit, but be able to flourish with such tight spaces and big think, defenders? Yeah, this is the thing again, right? If you play him down the middle of the pitch, I think he will get lost in there a little bit. I've watched a game. Uh, there was a lunchtime kickoff a couple of weeks ago. Uh, on a Saturday, I can't remember who you played. The, the pitch was we, we terrible. Played, we played Motherwell and got beat. <laughs> uh, it was before that. It was before, before that. that okay. you, you won the game 1-0. Um, it was an absolute terrible pitch. He played down the middle as a number nine. He had a decent chance to score. I think Dessis might have come on and scored after. Um, but, um, yeah, I, I just thought he couldn't get into the game, like you say, because it was tight, because... Um, you know, the teams are sitting deep and things like that. But from a wider position, I think he's more more able to receive the ball in a bit more space. And I think he's able to have a bit more success, like in the scenario where he scored the goal against Hibs. Um, perfect yeah. example of that. Perfect. I mean, it's, it's great to hear that you're still still following him. Um, <laughs> that's, I mean, it I'd, makes me think... I'd, I'd, I'd love for him to be a success at Wolves. I 100% would. Uh, I, right. I think, you know, he's been treated unfairly. He's, he's a good honest player I think when it comes down to it um, he can be a bit stroppy when things don't go his way there's been incidents where he's been on the bench at Wolves he's not come on and you know he's thrown a water bottle here or there but I think he was unfairly treated in his second season where he should have played a lot more minutes when Raul Jimenez just wasn't cutting the mustard after his injury as well and so I also think and you'll, you'll know this that we've got a, a big rivalry against West Brom and in his first season as an 18 year old he scored two goals in the two games against them. And in see, it was a season when there were no fans in grounds or anything like that. That sort of thing, I think, can really start kickstart a career off. That's kind of cult hero stuff yeah. um, when you're scoring against your biggest rival. Of course, yeah. And I think the fans would have fallen in love with him um, if, if they were in the grounds, you know, able to see that kind of moment. Um, again, kind of thing that's just kind of gone against him a little bit. Um, I thought... Oh. Just try to word this right. He's definitely come on. I mean, I think initially he didn't hit the ground running, I would say, just my personal opinion. But he's certainly come on and been a big part of the team playing on that left hand side. I think a lot of Rangers fans would, would love to keep him. What world does that happen for you? I think it's probably the, the most likely scenario is to have another season long loan next year. Um, and see how it goes. Financially, I don't think the, the club would ever accept anything that you guys were able to afford at yeah. this moment in time. Um, he's, it's it's a shame because you know he still he still feels like his career has been dictated to him a little bit um, on that basis. He could you know absolutely settle down in Rangers, score twenty odd goals next season, become a hero, and then at the end of it he still ends up being moved on somewhere else because it doesn't suit Wolves. But the club have to look after themselves, right? Um, so it's it's unfortunate that he's kind of in this scenario. A, a lot of players from Portugal seem to be uh, because of Mendes, because of the way he deals with things. Um, but yeah, it, it, would, it would make me feel pretty warm inside if he was to go on and have a really solid kind of career at Rangers because I think it's the kind of place he can... He can well, but that's what I was going to go on to. If, if, if something... If a long, I mean, I, I think I've got a bonus with you. We, we, as Rangers fans, are under no illusion of the the money that we have and the, the markets that we're going to be able to compete in. And the Premiership, in general, is not a market we're going to be able to compete in. Um, it's been suggested on our pod the other night there, like a... a, a uh, maybe a high single-digit million number with a very high sell-on fee. Does that sound something that's possible? I guess. I guess so. Yeah. I mean, it's not it's not unheard of for, for players to to move on from the SPR at a high fee, right? So it still could be financially beneficial for Wolves. Yeah, if you if you include that that sell-on fee, you know, when you think about mm. 
Um, you know, someone like Virgil van Dijk moving on from Celtic at one point, you know, would have been a relatively high fee, I think. Um, it's if it's not it's not like it's you know not an option, but I do think if he has a good end to the season here, there will be interest in him as well from elsewhere. Right. And if there are the clubs from in Europe who, who fancy it, it's it's a tough sell to, to, to try and convince the club that, that, that Reigns is still the best option for him, even if he personally wants to stay. Yeah, I mean, he, he's been commented during the uh, well, just after the Hibs game that he's really enjoying it here and he, he, he hasn't always been happy, which I felt was a, a bit of a dig at, at Wills, but... Um, I guess he just maybe just speaks his mind sometimes, and, and English might be not be well. Isn't his first language, so he's maybe not said what he. It's he, but he I don't meant. think anybody. I don't think anybody's surprised by that. Yeah. You know, no, no, uh, fair enough, fair enough. He's had a pretty um, uh, mixed career so far. Do you think there's there's any chance of you recouping most of that thirty five million if that is the fee? Uh, no, no, nothing like that. I don't. Nothing think. like I that. Think the best, where, where I think the best. We, I think the best we can hope for is something between fifteen to sixteen million. Probably. Right. Yeah. Yeah, and that's incumbent on him scoring goals back end of the season, hopefully securing a title for you guys um, and uh, having that to hang his hat on because it's tight, right? It's 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 a home stretch and, you you know, a, a striker firing you to victory like that is, is worth their weight in gold. It shows he's got that kind of winning mentality. You know, he's, he's already, like I say, he scored the winning penalty for PSV last year in the final of the, of the Cup. So I think he's got that kind of bit of energy about him where he's uh, he's driven, he wants to win things. Um, so, yeah, I think that that's worth its weight in gold for a, for a, a club. I mean, the be- best case scenario for us, I, I, I don't know if you if you know, but we're still in three other competitions. Obviously, we play tomorrow night in Europa. Um, yeah. We're in, in by the top of the league at the moment. It, it will be, it'll probably be tight. Uh, and we're still, uh, we're in the semi-final of the Scottish Cup. If he, let's just say, best case scenario, we win all four competitions this season because we've already won the League Cup. Well, how does that affect his transfer value, do you think, or does it not really translate over to the English market? I think that's definitely something that you could say would boost it. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. Especially if, as long as he plays the minutes, right, You know, and you have that success, absolutely. I mean, even something like if he turns up, tomorrow night, uh, you know, home leg against a team that's dropped out of the Champions League and, and, and wins that game for you. That's the kind of thing that I think people sit, sit up and take notice of. Um, so, yeah, absolutely. I, I, I don't think there's a, there's any kind of attitudes about, well, it's just kind of Scotland. Uh, I think, you know, everyone knows that there's still competition between the two Glasgow clubs that, that mean you have to show up. You have to, you know, really fight for something. You know, nobody's walking the league like Bayern have in Germany for the, the past kind of 10 years. It's it's not that kind of situation anymore. Um, so, yeah, I think for sure, if, if you were to have that kind of end of the season, you know, real definite boost to transfer value. For sure. the, there's, it's, it is an unique kind of uh, atmosphere or goldfish bowl, they call it in, in Glasgow with the uh, Rangers and Celtic, but there, there is a pressure plane for us that I don't know if many players get Elsewhere, really, other than you know the maybe your Man Cities or whatever, and Barcelona, Real Madrid. But you, if you lose or draw, that's a disaster. And if you don't play to the following week, you've got a week's worth of tabloid newspapers making a big deal about your loss. Yeah. Um, I'm assuming you don't get that feeling at, at Wolves. No, not at all. Not at all. Especially this season. You know, with people with predictions to go down, um, we've. We've kind of our stocks fallen quite a bit um, since we were in Europe a few years ago, so yeah, don't, you don't get that kind of pressure. I think the pressure that Fabio would have felt would have come from the price tag that he was initially signed for, which again was is a false economy. It's it's George Mendes money, which you almost can't you have to discount to a certain degree. Um, so that's probably what's tainted his career and 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 the perception of him up to this point. I actually think he's the kind of guy, if you threw him into a battle, he, he'd thrive under that kind of right. pressure. I think he's the one who wants to be the main man and, and you know, has that kind of personality where he wants to to show himself in those kind of scenarios. So if you stuck him in, in the middle of, middle of an old firm game, 
I think he's the kind of guy you want in your team. Uh, are we seeing, from what you've seen of him at Wolves and, and on loan, are we seeing the best of him at the moment? Or is there, I, I, don't, I don't mean the best that he's ever going to be, but is, is this the best he's played? Or is there still some room for improvement for us? I think, yeah, yeah the, the glimpses are like, that goal against Hibs was kind of pure kind of Fabio in a nutshell, really. Um, gets the ball, finishes it really smartly, but gets his shot off quickly. His, his ability to get shots off is really uncanny. Um so, I mean, that's what you can look forward to um, as he gets match fitness. The, he, he barely played a minute for us between kind of October and January when he signed for you guys. Um, I don't think he did play a minute as it happens. So, he obviously has still probably some way to go in terms of match fitness and sharpness. Um, so, yeah, there's definitely levels to go yet. Um, you'll notice when he's fully fit, he looks a lot quicker. Then right. he probably did at the start of his uh, Rangers uh, move. So I think that's the noticeable thing for me when I've seen him. Uh, the, so the, ga- the game against Benfica last last week, he he seemed to be trying to prove a point, or I don't know if that's the right word for it. But he, even when when the two goals went in, he didn't score them, but he celebrated. He was the one at the front celebrating like he was the goal scorer. So he looked like yeah. he was trying to make a point over there. Um, that's been. I mean, just impressed with his attitude and his work in that, in that, in that game in particular. Look, Gully, thank you so much for coming on. Um, thanks for giving me your time. Please, once again, tell us what you do. Tell us where we can find um, your podcast. Yeah, so it's at Molyneux Musings on Twitter. Um, at Wolves Fancast uh, is the main channel on YouTube, Twitter, Instagram, everything. So, uh, yeah, give us a follow and um, good luck to you guys and Fabio Silva. Well, same to yourself uh, with your team this year. I hope you don't go down. As I say, I've got that, that kind of mental connection from, from Shoot Magazine back in the 80s. Yeah. Uh, thank you, everybody, for listening. Thank you to uh, uh, people subscribing. Please, if you do like this, there's more to come. There's more interviews with other podders on uh, our other transfer um, loans this season. Uh, so thank you very much for watching. We'll see you again soon. <laughs>